Hello, I'm Adriana, and today I have an intuitive reading for you. We're going to do using the tarot cards. I am a master soul path teacher and guide, and we're going to look at your situation today in a way that is per perhaps different than what you've seen. So we're looking for alternate perspectives that help you shift to more clarity and shift to more abundance. So let's go ahead and get these cards. I'm using the Star Tarot. Okay. It's just going to take me a second. We're putting out 10 cards. This is a Celtic cross reading that I have done my own personal modifications for. Or I should say a Celtic cross spread. So... There are things about the, the traditional that don't really sit, sit with me. and um, But overall, I think it gives a really good picture of what's going on and, and where we're going with things. All right. Mm, lovely. Six of Cups crossed by Ten of Pentacles. We've got some family stuff going on right now. A lot of big family stuff going on. Oh, okay. Now keep in mind that this is not obviously a one-on-one -on -one reading that I would normally do where we, we can back and forth and we can talk and clarify things. So please, please take responsibility and use this information with, with conscience and as I keep saying, responsibility. It's up to you to interpret and to draw what is useful to you. Um, again, if we were one-on-one, -on -one, we could clarify things and I could make sure you were really understanding what was coming through. So use your own empowerment and discretion here. Okay, our situation and your energy right now is the Six of Cups. We're really looking at the healing of the inner child. And um, we're crossed by the Ten of Pentacles, which is another family card, another card about leaving a legacy. So I really think that you are struggling against some kind of inheritance, whether this is an inherited trait or maybe an inherited responsibility. It's something that you're stuck with because it's related to you. This could be a lot of different things in your world, but Overall, your inner child is seeking healing from this. And let's kind of explain what the inner child is. We've got two cards going on, the Prince of Swords also, that is talking about this. And inner child is, if you think back to yourself before you were five, was the child that was very innocent and very unaware, but it was absorbing all of the negative patterns in your family situation, in your family dynamics, either between members of your household, like mother and father, or from you to your siblings, or you to one of your parents, or both. And it's the inner child that did not get fully seen or loved, and it's because of all these negative patterns that sit in the self it, it sits there and you grow up kind of around it and until we turn conscious and look inward and look at how the ways how look at all the ways that the inner child was wounded it's hard to get any sort of progress on the spiritual path the soul is actually where is that correct? The higher self is actually the inner child in disguise. So healing the inner child is a direct line to tapping into more of your true self. So we have the Six of Cups. It's interesting because I have past, present, future, and we have Six of Cups, which is the past in the present. And the horses are they're flying right into this Prince of Swords. So we are talking about something you have said or something that was said to you that you internalized. We have a lot of swords. We've got four sword cards in your reading. So this is internalized judgments, the way that you received criticism from other people and took it very personally and then began judging and criticizing yourself. Um, there's also, I feel like right now, 
this inner critic is very inward focused. It's not so much that you're caught up in judging other people. It's that happens as a result of where you are with this. It's more that you're really judging and criticizing yourself. That's our Prince of Swords. And what's really important to realize is that you're acting out of a wounded part of yourself. See, the inner child is just pure love and wants to be interacted in a with interacted with in a loving way and wants to just give and share love back and forth and if you had an upbringing where that was possible your whole time then you probably wouldn't be listening to this video and i wouldn't be here i don't know that anyone has that kind of idyllic um, childhood or idealized childhood because at some point the inner child perceives that they're either not getting the love they want or not feeling worthy of the love that they're seeking. And then they start to tell themselves stories. Well, I'm not good enough, or I should be more like this, or it's my fault that this happened. And because it happened, no one's loving me back. That's the kind of stuff we're dealing with here. And this is really a, an important time to come to terms with all of this and to take ownership of it in a way. Um, really captivated by there's a purple circle up in the corner here and there's a lot of purple butterflies and little purple fairies on here so we're trying this is like the higher self the divine trying to help us transform this wound into something beautiful so once we stop judging ourselves once we stop criticizing and saying you're not enough you can't handle this you don't have any business being here then we start to shift that energy and, and we start to understand that underneath is just the opposite, is the de desire to say, yes, you are enough. Yes, you can do this. Yes, this wasn't your fault. Okay. Now, if nothing changes with where you are with this energy, we have the three of swords. So you're, you're headed for self-betrayal and a deep grief and a deep heartache and i'm not sure that that's a bad thing not that i want you to feel bad or to suffer but it's that it's it's the cathartic breaking that allows release it's really releasing this grief releasing this sadness releasing and um you know In my own journey, I'm going along happily. I'm pretty aware that there's some dysfunction going on, but I'm used to it in my family. And so it's, you know, I deal with it, right? You normalize it, you get used to it. But once I turned around and I realized that the person who was supposed to provide me with unconditional love, which would be the mother, um, couldn't do that, didn't want to do that. And it wasn't because of me per se, it was because of her own trauma or stuff that happened with her. Once I realized that, that was absolutely devastating. Like if the one person who's supposed to love you can't love you, what does that say about you? You know, like what does that say about me? If I can't, if she's has no choice but to love me because she's my mother and she doesn't, then am I really ever worthy of love? That's the heartache and that's the heartbreak. And then it was when that heartbreak happened and, and I did it was emotionally very difficult to get through that time. But the thing is, once that break happened, then I was able to look at it and say, well, this didn't really have anything to do with me. She had her own wounds going on. She had her own stuff going on. She can't even fully love herself. So how could she possibly love another person? And it ended up empowering me to learn how to love myself and to practice loving myself and then ultimately to help other people do the same. So consciously, we have the Ten of Swords, and so you are trying to make, you're trying to make a conscious break with this pattern, And but at the same time, there's still some shock going on. I don't feel like you're totally, we're in a, a moment of turmoil or a moment of, um, unrest about it. it there's there's just still something that we're not at peace yet that's what i'm trying to say so we're we're in the mid process lo and behold queen of cups at the bottom this is the mother energy this is nurturing energy in your subconscious 
So subconsciously, you are trying to heal your relationship with your outer mother, but you're also trying to heal your relationship with your inner mother. And the relationship with your inner mother is actually the most important. How you mother yourself, what you say to yourself, because the outer mother, that's a difficult thing. They're in their own thing, right? And you might be able to get things to a certain point or you might have walked away. Whatever it is, the most important mother is not the one that gave birth to you. It's actually the one that's already in you. The one who is the guardian and the steward of the inner child. You know, she's really the mother, the unconditional loving energy that says, no matter what you do, no matter what you're struggling with, no matter what mistakes you make, I still love you. And that is the con the this is in the subconscious right now that needs to come into the conscious energy. So again, I'll like, we've got swords just crowning this thing. So you really are trying to work through this, but understand that even though the mind is trying to race and make sense, it's that emotional support that yourself is going to really need to get through this. And it's emotional support from yourself. This energy here, Queen of Cups, is also reminding you that you are at all times connected to the sacred divine feminine. And that loving space, that loving energy can open these doorways and portals to you that can bring in healing that you never thought was possible. Um, it's really interesting I'll just share a little story with you I have a, a cat who's recovering from something and he's older and he's a little more frail and last night he was lying next to me and I was holding his paw in my hand and I started just sending him loving energy just through his paw into his body and um, you know asking my higher self and, and the divine to bring more and more love and it his body immediately responded. He went into a deeper state of relaxation, like I could see his muscles twitching and things. And um, and he stayed there for a couple minutes and then all of a sudden he perked up and was doing all these things and, and being more active. So we have a lot more support and connection within ourselves than what we realize. And all it takes is aligning with love in some way. So whatever it takes to align you with love whether it's doing something you love, being with someone um, that you love, or visualizing something that you love, that opens the door to more support. <laughs> and look at this, advice from the higher self, Princess of Cups, which is, these are very connected cards here, the queen and the princess. So advice from the higher self is trust your intuition, be open to that listening, and really allow your soul to move between those spaces of intellectual understanding and emotional acceptance. And the thing with emotional acceptance is that it's, it touches everything. The mind is, is made, the mind sorts things out, right? It's the ultimate organizer and categorizer. So there's some things I like, there's some things I don't like. And that's the way the mind is supposed to function. But when you're healing, you have to love all of it. I mean, scabs don't look beautiful, right? But they are protecting the new skin. So if you sort out the scab, like if you rip it off, so you're separating it from the wound or you're separating it from the healing, then you're not gonna heal as well. So you have to embrace, you have to leave that scab on, you have to leave that ugliness on because it's part of the healing. So that's what we're talking about with this Princess of Cups. Leave everything on, embrace every stage of this journey here because it may not be pretty, it's not going to be pretty, but ultimately it's going to create the release that you're seeking, Three of Swords. And um, Seven of Swords, <laughs> so many swords. Seven of Swords is outer influences. And this is interesting though, because this is an inner card. And so what I'm feeling like is either you have someone who is acting as a sounding board, or there are events in the outside world that are really pushing you to come to this place of breakthrough. 
it's like the stag is this, it might be a, like a wise teacher or a, um, just an energy that opens you up to this path of healing. Um, I love this. It's a white stag. So we've got this presence from the divine and, and strength and protection. So you, you have a lot of support, even if, okay, so here's the tricky thing. The support may actually come in the form of a trigger. So it may be the thing that tips you off and you kind of lose control and, and everything is, is sobbing and trying to make sense of what's happening. But that's actually, you're still protected in all of that. I mean, it's, it's like there's a certain progression that has to happen that your subconscious and your guides are aware of. And so even if it's something little that triggers you into this release, it was meant to happen. Now I want to move into the next card, which is the high priestess. This is your hopes and fears. And this is a really fascinating card to have here because the high priestess is about trusting your intuition and your inner knowing, but it's also about getting really, really comfortable with that subconscious, getting really used to looking into that shadow. I need to just feel into this for a second to see where we're going with it. There's a fear of touching that darkest part of yourself. And I don't mean like the perhaps the darkest part that because sometimes when you say dark, you think, oh, that means harmful. And yes, that means harmful. But the dark we're talking about here is like the unlovable, what you feel is unlovable and, and so ugly that it can't be lugged, <laughs> lugged, <laughs> loved. Um, there's a fear of really touching that. So it's like, you know, am I really unlovable? Am I really not deserving of love? I mean, there's been so many things that have happened that have proved that to me. So maybe that really is true. And there's a part of you that's afraid of finding that out. And the thing is, is the truth is everyone is capable of love and of loving, deserving of love, deserving of giving and receiving love. We are at our true core beings of love. We can spend a lot of time away from that. We can absorb so much toxicity that we forget how or don't, no longer want to. But at the core, there is still that essence of love. And so this high priest is saying, high priestess, I'm sorry, is saying, you've got to go down there. This is what you've been afraid of. This is what you've been afraid of all along. And that's why your mind is so active with all these swords. But you've got to go down and find the truth. And that's our seven of swords. We've got, there's a portal for you waiting, but you've got to go down there. And you've got to find out what's really true about yourself. Now, there's still something else in here. What else is in here? This is about confronting the truth about yourself because let's say you really do some inner soul searching and you know, some journaling or meditating or writing and you come up with this fact that actually, yes, you are lovable. What does that really mean? How does that completely impact your world and your worldview and your relationships and who you're surrounding yourself with? And, you know, again, that mother energy, have you been willingly staying with toxic relationships? Does this now mean that you have to completely end things with certain people? I think that is the fear. Okay, it's easier to believe. Okay, every relationship is formed on a certain narrative. Okay, sometimes it's a need narrative, sometimes it's a desire narrative, sometimes it's a little bit of both, sometimes it's a dependence, um, sometimes it's support, sometimes it's respect, sometimes it's uh, an impact, like an imbalance of power, one's trying to get more power from the other. Anyway, every relationship has a narrative, but I think what you're going to find is that you're currently entertaining relationships close to you that don't fit the narrative of truth that don't fit the narrative of what you actually know and believe about yourself. 
And when you find that out, that means that you've got to make choices. Either you choose to align with yourself and you approach these relationships saying, okay, this is who I am, take it or leave it. Or you have to pretend like you didn't know or pretend like you don't know the truth about yourself and continue to engage in the way you've been engaging. But it's going to be really difficult because first of all, you know, you're not going to be true to yourself and you have to live with that feeling of hiding and kind of um, paranoia and being unwilling to share yourself and that anxiety that if they truly find out who you are and, and what you really want, that suddenly this isn't going to work and you're going to be rejected and alone, but you're already rejected and alone if you're hiding from someone. So you, there's a lot of stress around this. And what I want to say is that the highest potential outcome looks very good. Okay, we've got the emperor, which we're back. This was, this was all the way, this high priestess is all the way down in the subconscious, but emperor is back on land. And the emperor is about foundation and security and support. And it's so like, it's like you're back. You've suddenly been able to create a world with good boundaries, with healthy boundaries. You have a, a healthy relationship with the masculine and feminine. You're aware of your dark, you're aware of your light. You know exactly what you need to support others and be supported. And so it's like once you've found out this truth and once you, you are okay with this truth, you bring it back and you build a stronger world for yourself. And you're now at the center of this world instead of being at the mercy of this world. You're truly empowered. And that, because you know, horns and antlers are intuition, but they also are kind of masculine energy. I feel like this here is the gateway to that. This is, this is trying to bring you there. And so maybe, you know, that helps you when you're in the midst of something that's very triggering is, okay, but I'm trying to get to that place of stability. I'm trying to get to that place of boundaries and foundation, or I'm not even trying, I'm headed for, you know, I am headed for this healthy place of power and wisdom and support. I think it's really important to think of support with this emperor card. He's actually one who gives support but he's in a strong place to do so. And um, there's a lot of confidence. There's a lot of protection with this card. And it's just, there's, there's just stability. And I feel like with all of the stuff that's going on here is that's what you want is you just want stability. And it's, it's the highest potential. If you go through all of this process here and you really, um, take it in. That's where you could be headed. Okay. Thank you for joining me for this reading. And if you are interested in a one-on-one -on -one reading or some more extended spiritual mentoring, please check out my website, soulguidancewithadriana.com, or my email is also in the description below. And I'll see you soon on another reading.